Welcome everyone. I'm Junyi. Today we're going to explore the concept and application of annotated bibliographies. Before we start, let's remember that we are on the traditional and unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tlaxcaltecas, Ketsi, and Coquitlam peoples. These lands have a long history, going back way before Simon Fraser University was here. We honor and respect the indigenous peoples whose ancestral lands we use for learning and working. We have a pretty comprehensive workshop agenda today. First, we'll start by understanding key terms and devising a search strategy. Then, we'll explore what an annotated bibliography is and why you should write it. Towards the end, we'll share some top tips for your annotated bibliography. As we kick off, let's focus on the key element in any search strategy, which is the use of keywords. Why do they matter? They're critical because they could help you to effectively derive focused, relevant search results. Take, for instance, the research question. Find me some female-identified oral history from Latin America. A carefully crafted search phrase could look like this. WOM, asterisk, or female, and aura, and Latin, A-M-E-R, asterisk. Now let's break down to see how this works. First, we have the OR operator. It broadens our search by allowing for interchangeable terms. In the example, the search will include records that mention either WOM asterisk or female. Next, the AND operator comes into play. It ensures that all search terms are included in the search results. In our example again, the use of AND means that the search results must include references to AURA and Latin AMER asterisk. Now let's turn to the asterisk symbol. It is a powerful tool because it allows us to include variations or alternate endings of a term. For instance, WOM asterisk will yield results for women, 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 and any other term that starts with WOM. By understanding applying these technologies, techniques, you can make your search strategy more nuanced and effective, and it can save you a lot of time by yielding more precise results. Now I'd like to encourage you to pause here and do a small group exercise. Look at your own and each other's research questions or topic sentences and begin to identify the following. Keywords, synonyms, and related terms that will help in your or their research. After you identified those terms and keywords, you could also try to play around with those words. Say, for example, you could try to use those words to craft some search phrases and try to compare them to see which one is better. Now let's focus on understanding the term annotated bibliography. What is this? It's essentially a list of works, a bibliography, but with an addition, which is annotations. What is annotation? Annotation basically means the descriptive and evaluative comments about the sources. In another word, an, an annotated bibliography means we describe and evaluate the, a list of works. That's annotated bibliography. You might be wondering what goes into an annotation. An annotation includes, usually includes several elements. It starts with a brief summary of the source, its central argument and results, a description of the research methodology, the source's strengths and weaknesses, its relevance for your research, and its relationship to other studies. It is important to note that your specific annotations don't have to include, include everything we listed here. These are just a general list of elements that you might come across when you're writing your own annotations. Okay, now let's take a closer look at a sample APA annotation. Specifically, we are looking at Barbara 
Erin Rex, Nickel, and Dimed. This will help us understand the key components of an annotation. It starts with a brief summary of the book's topic, which is the journalist's attempt to understanding living on minimum wage in America through experiential research. Then it details the author's approach to her research, including taking on various low-wage jobs and reflecting on her experiences. Then it highlights the author's background as an experienced journalist, along with her awareness of her experiment's limitations and ethical implications. Following that, the annotation also points out that Irene Reck doesn't just rely on her personal experiences, but also includes scholarly research on her places of employment, the economy, and the cost of living in America. And as we can see here, the annotation concludes with a positive evaluation of the book, describing it as timely, descriptive, and well-researched. All of these elements we see here, when they combine together, they provide a comprehensive and insightful overview of the book. It details its topic, approach, validity, and overall value for the researcher. Now let's turn to our top tips. It begins with keeping your research question front and center. As you work on your annotated bibliography, keep your research question in the forefront. Why? Because it will be a good guide for you to explore and for you to make sure that you don't lose your focus while you're doing the annotations. Additionally, make sure that you read more sources than you need. While initial scheme reading is fine, ensure that you don't limit yourself to the first sources you come across. That is because variety and depth in your sources are the key to your successful annotated bibliography. That being said, there are some potential downsides to when it comes to read more sources than you need. For example, it could be time consuming, overwhelming, and it could create challenging problems in terms of organization of the sources. So while we recommend you to read more sources than you need, Please remember to keep a balance between the qualities of the sources and the quantity of the sources you read. Another tip is to keep track of your sources. For example, you can pin sources in the library catalog, or you could use citation management software like Zotero. What I often do is just a simple direct way, which is to maintain a document with all my complete citations. Lastly, remember to read your sources closely. Effective annotations require clean, clear and succinct analysis, and skills like paraphrasing will be instrumental in writing your annotations. Talking about paraphrasing, I'd like to remind you of the services provided by us, the Student Learning Commons. If you need more personalized guidance, don't hesitate to book a one-on-one -on -one writing consultation. It can provide you targeted feedback and support your specific needs. For example, if you want to learn more about paraphrasing, come to us and we will discuss it in your writing context. Another thing we provide is constructive criticisms on your draft. We do so by commentating on your draft submitted to writeaway.ca. It is a, writeaway is a platform which can help improve your writing by providing you detailed and helpful feedback. Lastly, I encourage you to explore our various writing resources. These resources, paraphrasing included, can provide comprehensive guidance on many aspects of writing and research. They could help to empower you to become a more effect, effective and confident writer. Remember, the SLC is here to support your academic journey. Please take advantage of these valuable resources.